Hi, and welcome back to another episode of How to Hack. So today we're going to discuss about Color Linux, and Color Linux is a great toolkit that actually has all the bonded software that you need to conduct security assessment as well as penetration testing. So it is, in fact, segmented into different phases that a computer hacker would actually go through in order to find information, find vulnerabilities, and then to exploit your systems using active attacks. So whether it's wireless system, wide interfaces, or trying to sniff packets, whether it's under the radar or you're aggressively trying to get into systems. So these are all the great tools are available within it. And it's a must have if you are a security practitioner or whether you are a attacker hacker or your computer hacker. So it has all the tools available and chances are we are gonna go through some of the tools so you understand where to mix and match, where are some of the potential items or services that are available where we could detect the flaws in the endpoints and the service and the systems and then of course be able to match it against another two because sometimes we need a way to check and balance between the kind of findings that we get. And we're gonna go into demonstration right now. So over here I have Color Linux running and Color Linux is a is the ultimate toolbox for any computer hackers or if you are a certified attic hacker. These are the great tools for you to actually use to conduct penetration testing, security assessments on the enterprise or the organization that you've been assigned to. So of course when you when you go to the application tab and you go to Call Linux, you'll be able to see the top 10 security tools that are available. And of course these top 10 security tools are commonly used tools that, that many hackers themselves as well as adequate hackers actually use to conduct security assessments. So of course if you were to the great thing about using this tool is that if you were to look at the the different tabs over here, you can see that it's firstly gathered into information gathering, followed by vulnerability analysis followed by web applications, password attacks, wireless attacks, exploitation tools, sniffing, spoofing, maintaining access, reverse engineering, and of course, and the rest of the services that are available. So if you were to think about carefully, these are actually the phases that a computer hacker has to go through in order to gain unauthorized access into those systems. So the very first step that, that is usually performed is called the information gathering phase. So in the information gathering phase, we are actually looking at different kind of ways of gathering the kind of systems information that are already available on the public internet that we can gain access into. So if you're thinking of a large enterprise or a large organization, chances are we have many available information that allow us to actually accelerate the process of gaining unauthorized access. So firstly, we could do take a look at domain name service analysis. We can understand what kind of domain name service they're running. We can look through the uh, in, intrusion prevention systems that they have running in the environment so that we know how to circumvent around it. And of course, there are many network scanning tools as well that are already available as, as demonstration on my other videos. So of course, the whole idea is that if we could find out all the information that we can gather first before we conduct an active attack, then chances are we have a higher chance of success. We know where exactly are the weak sports and we can know where the vulnerabilities being assigned to and we know what are the systems that we can first target. So the whole idea of this is accelerate the whole process of unauthorized access. And of course, moving forward is that we'll be looking at what kind of vulnerabilities, after we have gathered all the information, what kind of vulnerabilities are there in the environment? If you look in terms of databases, even the, the up and coming technology databases like NoSQL, MariaDB, NoSQL type databases. So we are able to look into this information and be able to assess the kind of databases you're running. Also, we are able to use fuzzing technologies to help us check against what are some of the inputs that we can throw into databases and try to try to get some information out of it and be able to assess the the posture, security posture of those databases they're running in the enterprise. And of course, web applications is a common, is common, very common attacks that we use frequently to to gather information on. So many enterprises have hundreds of web applications available on their enterprise and their organization. They're used for many kind of systems, many kind of business units, organizations within their their enterprise. And we want to be able to identify the kind of content management system that they have. So we could use Blind Elephant, WP Scan, etc. And of course, database exploitation again, understanding the IDS, IPS identification. So all these are the, are the way that we actually perform to gather even more information, pinpoint the vulnerability that are associated with each of the systems in the environment. And of course, moving forward, that is when 
now that we have gathered all the information that we need, we can actually start to actively probe against the system. These are, these are very aggressive ways of trying to gain unauthorized access. However, you'll be surprised, you know, just these first three steps alone could actually get you pretty far into the, into the systems that you're targeting against. So you'll be really surprised about it because sometimes when you are searching, when you are looking for publicly available information, we could actually find SQL servers, password list files, usernames, database configuration files, just within the three phases. So after we have, of course, gone through the phases, we now go into the password attacks phase. So of course, we have GPU-2s that are they're very popular now to help us crack passwords. And of course, we have online attacks. So firstly, online attacks are just direct probing against systems that are available. So of course, you'll be asking a question, why the hell would anybody be using offline attacks, right? So offline attacks is that, imagine the first three phases, either in information gathering, vulnerability analysis, or web applications, we actually gather some kind of password list. Maybe it's hashed. So we are able to start cracking those passwords using available tools over here that, that also has been demonstrated in some of my previous videos that you can take a look at. And of course, wireless is a, is a really hot thing. Every organization, every enterprise has wireless access. And the whole idea is, are we able to gain unauthorized access into those wireless network and be able to gain system access into it? So you'll be surprised when, when users actually, enterprises actually have bring your own device policies. And some of the users actually use their mobile devices to enable Wi hotspot Wi-Fi hotspots that allow other devices to connect into that hotspot. And this actually creates a lot of problems because many unauthorized devices are actually given the permission to access your enterprise content. And at the same time, imagine if they were malicious or if those devices were actually vulnerable, then chances are it's going to be the weak spot that will allow computer hackers unauthorized access into those systems. And of course, we have exploitation too. So this is, of course, the, the really popular ones are like uh, Beef, which is cross-site scripting framework. And of course, we have Metasploit. This is everybody, you got to know Metasploit. It's, it's a highly automated tool to help you actually gain shell access into the system. It helps you automate the way of controlling the, the system that has already been compromised. So we are actually able to write exploits, able to put different kind of payloads and set some configuration settings for us to gain access into the vulnerable systems. So it's a highly automated tool that you got to learn. And of course, we have Social Engineering Toolkit as well. So this is, a, again, another great tool for you to use. Sometimes exploits might not be that straightforward. It might require a lot of technical thinking, tinkering of, of the platforms, understanding the architecture of the processes. But sometimes what's a really easier way is actually to just use social engineering tactics for you to gain access into those systems. So of course, moving forward, we have sniffing, spoofing. So again, these are great ways for you to gain access when once you're in the network, you're actually able to take out the different kind of packets that are not encrypted and be able to look at how the how the network are being talking to each other, how systems are talking to each other and communicating to each other, how are data being exchanged. So this is a great way for you to understand what's going on in the network environment. Again, this could uh, this is again, you already have access into enterprise network. Chances are you want to know exactly what's going on. You want to have a better picture of, of the kind of data that are being exchanged. And of course, once you have gained access into it, chances are you want to maintain a lot of access into the system because who knows, right? The database administrators or the system administrators could be updating the system and that would actually take away all the vulnerabilities and chances are you can go back again. So what we want to do is want to maintain privilege accesses into those systems. So we have to install some kind of backdoors that allow you to always have access, to have perpetual access into those systems and be able to remain silent and remain undetected by antivirus systems. So again, this is really important ways of you to plan access into those systems. And of course, if, if generally after maintaining access, the, the rest of the phases are actually more or trying to understand how exploits actually work, like reverse engineering, you're trying to debug certain malware, you're trying to understand how malware actually operates, how can you write a, a much better system, a much better backdoor that can actually bypass antivirus detection, how do you make sure that your backdoor are actually unable to be detected by by network intrusion prevention systems or host intrusion prevention systems and, and the likes. 
And of course, you have stress testing tools as well, and many of the other tools available here that you can actually use to stop or start services. Of course, you can do this all through the command prompt, but of course, sometimes you just want to click and click and be able to activate those services. So this is a great tool. Color Linux is a great tool for you to to use that can be able to allow you to have control over the security assessment of the enterprise network that you are targeting against. And at the end, of course, you can push all of this data into reporting tools that allow you to ultimately report back to management or to report back to your clients and tell them of the security posture of your environment and be able to let them understand what are the remediation steps for them to take next. And there you have it. We were went through the Kernel Linux and we saw how the different kind of phases that a computer hacker have to go through in order to actually see what are some of the phases that you go through in order to gain unauthorized access into the system. And this is a really, Kernel Linux is a toolbox for you to get all the necessary toolkit that you need to actually gain information first. So like mentioned earlier during the demonstration, the three phases, the three first phases actually allow you to gain so much more information, whereas database misconfiguration, web server misconfiguration, all this information could actually be available without you to actively attack the systems because active attacks could actually trigger some kind of notifications and alerts that actually block your your advanced persistent threat. So it's really important to go through thoroughly each of those phases and be able to gain all the information that you need. Sometimes you'll be surprised the kind of sensitive information and confidential information that you can actually gain without actively attacking the system. And of course, a lot of my subscribers have been asking, what about defense? How can we, what are some of the tools available in the in the market right now? What are some of the state of the art technologies that are available to help us actually defend against many of these advanced persistent threats? So of course, there are a lot of interesting technologies like user behavior analytics. There are technologies that could automatically detect the, the the advanced persistent threat is coming in and be able to block them at different routers and firewalls and databases and endpoints. And it's all done in an automated fashion. So these are really great tools that we'll be exploring in, in the future videos. And of course, if you enjoy and you've learned something today in today's presentation demonstration, feel free to subscribe. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll try my best to answer them. And thank you for watching.